All right, so great, thanks. Okay, for the new students, um, please enlarge my screen, right? So I won't be doing any screen share. Okay, the only screen that you will see is my screen. Okay, so make sure you blow this up. Okay, turn on your webcam. Okay, so um, before we commence with the class, turn off your WhatsApp and any electronic device. Okay, we don't need that for the next two hours. So I'm going to turn off mine as well. Okay, so anything that you need to reach me, you just reach me through the... Uh, the uh, private message down here and enlarge my screen right okay so uh, are we good to go okay great so I would like you guys to do me a favor okay uh, we will be accessing the first lesson folder right okay so for the newer students this is how it will look like okay, I'm not sure whether you guys are locked in okay uh, you have to use your LMS <coughs> Okay, for Ash and Nat, okay, this will be uh, lesson one. Okay, for Elijah and Zach, give me a second. Uh, you probably don't have this interface. All right, okay, so uh, if you're a H1 student, go to the H1 folder. If you're the H2 student, go to the H2 folder. Okay, open up lesson one, okay, J2 prep one. Okay, so this is something that you will probably see. Once you open the question paper, okay, this is what you will see. All right, so I'd like you guys to drop me in the uh, in the in a comment segment, okay? Whether you see the uh the the same question paper, and for those who have actually printed out, okay, do you all see the same question paper? Issues on fuel, okay? I see that Elijah has printed great. Okay, so Zach has printed, Elijah printed, Nat printed, uh, Ash. So oh, Elijah, co correct, uh? issues on fuel, uh? that's the correct one. Uh? Ashley, do you get access to that? Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> okay, so yesterday I was a bit ambitious, I covered. <laughs> so I covered too many things yesterday. So today I'm looking to streamline this. Right, so you guys are always uh, a little bit more fortunate. Okay, for the second run, if uh, I can't print uh, my house, is sure. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Yeah, so I, I, I recommend to print, but if you can't print, it's fine. All right, so um, there are five questions here. Okay, we don't need to do this. Okay, so let me explain the approach for this holiday session. Uh. Okay, so this holiday session, I'll be going through uh, eight case studies. Okay, from these eight case studies, we will be working on practice and reverse engineering so from all these eight practices we will be working backwards and uncovering any conceptual error all right okay and i will guide you guys okay, through the harder questions so um okay i figured that from yesterday's response okay it has been quite a long break right since uh since you actually touched on something econs related right <laughs> okay so i'm going to cut you guys some slack Okay, so what I intend to do is, okay, we will go through only two questions today. Okay, but I'll pick the questions, right? So we have question D and question E. Okay, so please circle them, question D and question E. Right, I will give you 15 minutes, one five, to do an outline for both questions. Okay, so later on, okay, we'll be going through the both of the outlines in depth. Clear? Okay, so question D and question E, 15 minutes. Hey, if you have any questions for me, you can drop it at the, at the you can PM me. Huh? Okay, so with that, okay, let's begin. 15 minutes, I will set the timer. Okay, and let's go.
Right, so please take your outline seriously. Uh. Okay, I'll also like to see your outline when you submit later. Huh? Okay. Uh, Elijah answered your question. Yep.
Right, last 60 seconds. Alright everyone, okay, thanks for joining me okay, in this activity. Okay, I will close the timer. Alright, so now okay, we will go through this case together okay, with particular uh, emphasis on question D and E. So I would like you guys to type out okay, one challenge that you encounter for question D first. Okay, one particular burning challenge or difficulty. Okay, what is one particular challenge? Okay, I'm observing the chat. Huh? Okay, and if I don't see anyone responding, I pro pro you're probably deemed too good to for, for this question. They'll probably get you to present. Huh? <laughs> now, question D. Right? Cannot remember framework for demand and supply change question. Right, okay. And hey, what about the rest? Hey, Zach, Ash, and Elijah. Linking a recession using economic explanation. Challenging question framework, I think not very strong. Okay. And hey, what about Elijah? Okay, so the rest, okay, I want you guys to. I can't remember more than on potential effect on increase. Okay, great. Okay, so um, for the rest of the students, okay, who have who have participated in this activity, okay, I want you to bear this in mind, okay, when we go through the outline together. Okay, so I think just now, uh, Elijah brought up a very uh valid point on how to come up with an outline. Okay, so I I figured that uh, would you all like me to go through with you the top process of building an outline together? Yeah, okay, so that will help you in your future essay planning, especially for the H2 students. Uh, okay, very important. H1s also, for the large questions, you, should, you can consider using this approach. Alright, okay, for, uh, for case studies question, it is very important okay, when you approach the question to have the end goal in mind. Okay, when I mention end goal, you need to deduce okay, what is the concept that is tested. Okay, or what is the topic that is tested in this question? So if you look at your challenge, uh, okay, I believe that only one of you brought up okay, the keyword <laughs> or brought up the framework. Okay, so I just want you guys to uh, make a second guess. Okay, what framework do we need? Someone brought up that the framework is challenging, but what framework is that? <laughs> or what topic do you think is related here? Okay, so far, I think Ned got it correct. Okay, so if you guys are a little bit more adventurous, you can probably put your answer to, to everyone. Okay, so everyone can see your... Right, uh, okay, we have Zach, demand and supply, okay. What else? Alright, how do we know it's a demand and supply question? Okay, or to be more specifically, uh, to be more specific, when do we need to use a demand and supply framework? Okay, I want you all to focus on these few keywords here, right? Number one, okay, you can see that there is an increase in fuel duty. Okay, if you haven't highlighted this, please highlight this. Okay, number two, you can see that there is a recession. Okay, and number three, this is the most important part. Okay, total expenditure. 
And in fact, this question came out for H2A levels paper. Okay, this is the one of the few times that <laughs> expenditure question came out for uh, H2 paper this year. And normally it comes out for essay, but for some strange reason, this year it came out expenditure for CSQ. And it's a, it's a good refresher. Hey, for those who want to see the, que the, the question paper, drop me a PM. Huh? Okay, I can send you the PM for this year's paper. So how, how do we know these three keywords actually tells us that this is a uh, we are going to use demand and supply framework? Of course, we have to guess. La. All right. So now, okay, let's make logical guesses. Okay, if you were to look at the extract question, uh, the extract tells us where, which extract is there? Uh, extract two. Okay, it tells us that okay, fuel duty and VAT, fair alarm tax, value added tax actually push your fuel prices higher. So we can see that these two are categorized together, right? They are grouped together. So if you're totally clueless, okay, you can you can consider relating fuel duty to a tax. If not, there is no better way to group them. Agreed? Okay, so it's going to be a tax on fuel. So now, okay, where have we learned the concept of tax? Okay, under demand and supply. So how is tax going to affect demand or supply? Hey, type it out. How is tax going to affect? Is it going to affect demand or supply? All right. Okay. So supply, supply. All right. So you can look here. Okay, if you if you have your book, hey, okay, it's always good to stand by your book. Okay, we can flip to page six. All right, page six. Okay, you can put here under government policy, tax and subsidy. Okay, you can bracket here, tax and subsidy. This two. Okay, so I won't be going through okay uh, excessive content here, but we can actually borrow concepts from web pages. Okay, under G, government policy. So this is a this is an indirect tax. Okay, it's going to reduce your supply curve. Okay, and it's going to make produ producing fuel more costly. All right. Okay, so this is how we connect the dots. Okay, we see a tax. Okay, then. We got to suspect that this is going to result in a fall in supply curve. Okay, or probably an indirect tax. Now, okay, what is this? Let's fast forward a little bit. What is the second point? Okay, or uh, they mentioned recession, right? How is recession going to affect okay, your demand and supply framework, which is going to be affected? Which one do you all think is going to be affected? Now let's look. Uh, okay, we have recession here. Recession is actually at the very last paragraph. Okay, we can see that recession is here, right? Okay, if we were to look in front, it's going to affect your income. Do you see the word income? Right, so income is going to result in okay, great. Okay, I do see your response coming in. Okay, there's going to be a fall in demand. Right, okay, so here, okay, it's under page four. Okay, this is your demand framework, the factors or determinants of your demand. We can actually see that income okay, is used here. Okay, we don't necessarily need to see recession, okay, but recession is almost always related to income. Okay, and for my H2 students, okay, if you have learned YED, then you have to make the assumption that it's a normal good. Okay, if it is an inferior good, okay, then the entire assumption will be different. Okay, so uh, make the assumption of a normal good. Okay, so we can see that a recession is going to affect the demand of fuel. Why? Okay, because of lower purchasing power. Okay, so this is how we connect the dots. Okay, so this is related to demand. So before you even pan down, okay, this is how you want to construct your outline. 
Okay, if you look at your question, okay, so you can actually scribble here. Oh, okay, so this will lead to a fall in supply. Okay, fall in demand. Okay, and then after that, you can expand your outline. Okay, so a lot of the students will be doing scribbling like that. Is everyone good so far? Now, okay, this is the most important part. Huh? A lot of students, I want you to check your outline. Okay, have you addressed what is total expenditure? What is total expenditure? What does it mean? What do we want to find out? In economics, uh, okay, expenditure has a very, very specific uh, illustration. <laughs> very, very specific. Okay, good, net. Okay, very, very sharp. Okay, for the rest, okay, you can make a guess. Okay, this is one of the harder questions, but this is the reason why we are tackling this question. So the next time that you encounter such question, okay, I hope you guys will have greater clarity. So sometimes, okay, they will use expenditure. Sometimes they will use producer revenue. Okay, I believe you have encountered such questions before, right? So I will not confuse you guys. Okay, most of the time, expenditure and revenue are pointing to the same thing. Most of the time, okay. So you want to you want to put a mental note with the exception of a tax that's involved. Right, so when there's a tax involved, your total expenditure, your consumer expenditure, consumer spending. Another word for expenditure is consumer spending. Okay, you can put consumer spending. Okay, most of the time, consumer spending and producer revenue is the same. Okay, in the exception of a tax, uh, then okay, consumer expenditure will differ from producer revenue. But today we don't need that. Okay, today we don't need that. We just need to look at consumer spending. So I'm just going to show you how to identify consumer spending. Now let's look at the book again. Huh? Okay, you can see here. Okay, I'm just going to go to page 8. Okay, page 8 is, is by right. Okay, not used to illustrate consumer spending. Not used to show that. Okay, but I'm just going to show you how do we illustrate consumer spending. I mean, more, if you have any questions, please type it out. Okay, this is a very small intimate class. Okay, I like to spend more time addressing questions. Alright, so just now only one of the students got it right. Okay, for consumer spending, we are concerned about equilibrium price multiplying by the quantity. Okay, so how do we establish that? We can see that, okay, this is your initial equilibrium price and your quantity, right? Which is determined by the intersection of your demand and supply. Okay, E0, do we see that? Okay, so we can see that the equilibrium price, okay, will be... Let's put a zero here or origin here. Okay, the uh, vertical distance between the origin to P0 multiply by your horizontal distance between origin to Q0. This okay, little rectangle okay, will be your total spending. Okay, we will be using this as a basis to, to build our point later. Okay, so there are two ways to illustrate. Okay, later on, I will show you. The easiest way is to always show four points. Okay, if in order to show any increase or fall in total spending, you need to show four points. So I will recommend you to establish origin. Okay, and label the intersection here. You can call it A or you can call it E0, doesn't matter. Okay, so the total spending here will be 0, P0, E0, and Q0, which is your price times your quantity. Is everyone clear? Can uh, We must use this later on. Uh. Now make sure you define that, okay, consumer spending. Okay, so now let's move on to our main point here. Okay, so we can see there's an increase in fuel spending and you're supposed to deduce how is this going to affect your total expenditure. Okay, so I'm going to break out how is it going to look like in your in your in your writing later. Okay, so your very first paragraph. Okay, I would recommend you to define all the key terms. Okay, so what is a recession? Right? Okay, what is a fuel duty? 
right? And you need to relate this to demand. Okay, you probably need to define demand as well. That's if you if you successfully identify recession as a demand factor, right? Okay, you want to identify supply, uh, fuel duty as a supply factor. Okay, it's an indirect tax. Define that as well. Okay, and you also want to define consumer spending. So I'm going to list these five points. Ah. Uh. Okay, so this is your paragraph one. Okay, if you are doing a full outline, okay, these are the terms that you should. You don't need to write out in full, okay, but you need to write out in point form. What do you intend to write out in the actual writing? Right, so your, your second paragraph will, your, will be your body paragraph. Okay, so your body paragraph, you probably want to start off with a good topic sentence. Okay, so you want to start off with the, the, the first point was fuel duty, right? Okay, so fuel duty. Okay, so you need to deduce how will fuel duties okay, result in a change in your consumer spending. Hey, remember, consumer spending or consumer expenditure-based questions are always concerned about the before and the after. Right? So now I'm going to go through this simple activity. Yeah? Okay, I want you all to make a mental note. Okay, so especially for supply factors, very, very crucial. Okay, you can join me in this drawing activity. Okay, it's not necessary for you to, to draw this in your outline. Okay, but I'm just showing you okay, what's the importance here. All right, so just now, okay, we identified that a fuel duty is going to lead to an increase or fall. It's going to lead to a fall in your supply curve, right? Yes? So now, okay, what is missing here? Okay, obviously, without the demand curve, we can't tell what's the consumer spending, right? So what is the key assumption here? There is an exceptionally important key assumption. So we know that the overall uh, in, uh, increase in factor of factor price is it? Yeah. So yeah, we know that a, a fuel duty is going to make uh, is going to make production of fuel more costly. And so production costs will go up. Increase in cost of production. Yeah, so we have to make a we have to make a, an assumption on the demand curve. It's only particular in this situation that we need to make an assumption for the, on the demand curve. Okay, so what is the assumption that we need to make on the demand curve? Okay, so for my H one students, this is a very popular question. So <laughs> case studies they love to test this. Okay, let me give you a little hint. Okay, it starts with the concept of, of elasticity. <laughs> what elasticity do we need to assume? Which one? Right. Okay, we need to assume your demand to be price demand elastic or inelastic okay so i'm going to show you okay the uh, a, a, a negative example first so a lot of students okay will not make an assumption they will go in and illustrate okay a simple demand curve all right so this is the most amateurish mistake okay because you cannot find okay the consumer spending as a result okay so i'm going to show you the second uh, the second most com the second error okay that uh, some of the students will will draw okay let's say okay if you if you draw a demand curve that is sufficiently flat okay what does sufficiently flat tells you okay what is the PED of a curve that is sufficiently flat is it elastic or in it is elastic right okay so we can see that okay now let's draw the four points huh? Okay, you can join me in this drawing activity. Okay, and I hope after going through this, okay, you will not get this question messed up again. So we can see that the initial four points of your, your initial spending is 0, P0, zero, EQ0, zero, yes? Now what happens when we, okay, when, there, when your demand curve is sufficiently elastic? Okay, as a result, we can see that when there is a fall in supply,
Okay, we can see that there is zero P1, E1, Q1 as your final consumer spending. Is everyone following me? So now, okay, what can we deduce about the consumer spending? Has it went up or went down? Okay, consumer spending. Went up or down? It went down. Now I'm going to draw the counterpoint. Uh. Okay, this one it can be you can draw it can be drawn relatively quickly. Okay, you can join me in this activity. So now all you need to okay is just to reverse. Okay, just make the demand curve as steep as possible. As steep as possible. So for some of the students who have been with me for some time, can okay, you realize that I'm very anal about this, uh? okay? <laughs> and you will see you'll you see the full full magic behind this, right? Okay, so we can see here. So if we were to tilt the demand curve sufficiently towards uh, clockwise, okay, you can see that your your demand curve will be inelastic, and your consumer spending will go up here. Agreed? Okay, when your demand curve is sufficiently inelastic. So what is the bottom line down here? It tells us that there can only be one correct answer. Right? And it all depends on your elasticity of your demand curve. Okay, so the worst scenario is you don't make an assumption. Okay, then that will be an except exceptionally amateurish mis mistake. So the second mistake is you make a wrong assumption. Then you will end up with a different outcome. Agreed. So now I want you guys to look at look back at the at the at the question paper. Okay, are there any mentionings about consumer spending? Or any anything that suggests your PED elasticity? Alright, so you can actually see here, as a result okay, of your VAT or your fuel duty, motorists are spending more on petrol. So what does it tell you when motorists are spending more? Okay, so which one is going to be the correct scenario when motorists are spending more? Is it scenario 1 or scenario 2? And the extract already suggests that motorists are spending more. Right, okay, so okay, it's going to be scenario two. Okay, the question already necessitated that spending goes up. Okay, so PED has to be sufficiently inelastic. Okay, so now let's go back okay, on working on your supply point. We identify that a fuel duty is going to reduce supply. We identify that PED is going to matter. Right, so how is PED going to matter? We need to look back at the question. Okay, so most of the time, the question will give us sufficient evidence to suggest the PD. So in this case, the question gave us the outcome okay, that consumer spending went up. Sometimes the question can give you the determinant itself. Right? So, so I'm going to show you where to get the determinant. Okay, you can flip to your book. And it's actually under page 12. Okay, we'll go through this okay, in the future in depth. Okay, unfortunately, it's not used today. Okay, but you can make a logical deduction. Fuel it has to be a necessity good, right? You use any, you probably use fuel in any every single production. Okay, so you can deduce that your your fuel is a necessity. Okay, nature of good. Therefore, it's going to be inelastic. Okay, you have to make this logical assumption, and together with what the extract suggests to you that consumer spending went up, ah, then you can make the you can. You can deduce that scenario two is the correct one. All right. So after it, after after I after drawing this diagram, okay, the most important part is to show. You need to link back to the question. Okay. So the link is always re re relating to your initial and final spending. Right? So I suggest you can use this four points. 0, P0, EQ0, 
Okay, and you can mention that okay, your total spending went up okay, as a result of your demand being inelastic. Why is your demand inelastic? Oh, because the extract suggested that consumer spending went up. Oh, because fuel is a necessity good. Okay, and then you go on to illustrate that because of your demand curve being inelastic, as a result of an increase in price, your quantity demanded fall less than proportionate. And when it falls less than proportionate, okay, your consumer spending will go up from the four initial four points to the final four points. Okay, so this is how you want to build your first point. Okay, with the end goal in mind. Is everyone following me? Okay. So this is the hardest part. Huh? Okay, we are done with the hardest part. Okay, so this is your paragraph two. Okay, what about paragraph three? Okay, it's the recession point, right? So for the recession point, okay, fortunately it's going to be easy. Why? Okay, because we have gone through elimination, we know that supply has already been exhausted. Okay, so in this case, we won't be talking about supply anymore. Right? Okay, so all we need to okay is to illustrate changes in your demand. Alright, so I just want to state clearly here for whenever you encounter supply factors which requires you to identify spending or producer revenue, you have to assume PED. PED is a must. Okay, it's exceptionally crucial. Okay, we can see that if you don't assume you're going to get two different outcomes, right? Okay, but when there is a change in demand factor, okay, it's not that complicated. We don't need PS here. Okay, it's not that the other way we need PS. Huh? We don't need PS. Okay, if you don't believe, okay, later on after the class, okay, you can you can try to tilt your PS. No matter how you tilt, it's going to be the same outcome. Okay, so don't make the silly assumption. I've seen a lot of students trying to reinvent the wheel. Okay, then they embarrass themselves. Alright, so your consumer spending will go in the same direction as your demand. Okay, so let me repeat. Your consumer spending will go in the same direction as changes in your demand. If demand goes up, consumer spending goes up. If demand goes down, consumer spending goes down. Okay, so let's quickly wrap this up. Okay, so can we confirm again, a recession will cause your demand to go up or down? Up or down? Can you all type out up or down? Then I will draw. Right? Okay, so a recession just now we have uncovered is going to lead to a fall in income, fall in purchasing power, right? A okay, fall in purchasing power, okay, and fall in demand. Okay, and when, let's look here. Okay, so same, we are going to apply the same principles. Let's look out for the four points. Okay, 0, P0, E0, Q0. These are the four points, right? Nothing new. Now, as a result of a recession, Okay, demand will fall. Right? So what can we see here? Okay, we can see that your <coughs> your four points will become zero P1, E1, Q1. Okay, so your consumer spending actually went down, right? Okay, so there's a shortcut here. The shortcut here is to identify this <laughs> as the loss of your spending. And later on, when I go through the answer, I will show you another way to illustrate the four points. Okay, but as for now, let's stick with the easiest four points only. Okay, we don't use we don't use different rect rectangle A B A B or C. We won't use that. Okay, is everyone good with how to build your third paragraph? Okay, remember to show uh, Now, okay, I'm going to go through the final point. The final point is going to be the challenging point. Right, so we know that from paragraph two, point paragraph two, your consumer spending will go up. 
from paragraph 3 your consumer spending will go down so your fourth paragraph or your synthesis down here okay is to justify what happens to your consumer spending so what is the overall effect on your consumer spending okay, I'm, I'm so sorry yeah. I think y'all can hear <laughs> yeah my, my, my soundproofing is not very good <laughs> one second uh. okay I want you to think through this question Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a dog at home. Okay. Can you all hear the, the barking? Is it very loud? <laughs> so what happens to the consumer spending? Come. Okay, the overall effect is based on the relative changes in demand and supply. Okay, next, your, your approach is, is sound, okay, but it is good when you want to address quantity and price question. Okay, it cannot address sp spending based question. So, so net actually brought up the overall effect is based on the relative changes in demand or supply. Okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to illustrate why is that so. <laughs> so remember, Hey, no matter how much your supply curve shift, right? Okay, the underlying principle when, whether consumer spending goes up or goes down is PD. Okay, it's not the extent of your supply curve shifting. Make sense? Okay, so what, what you want to compare is these two. Changes in demand versus your PD. So it's important to identify that we cannot find an outcome first. We must acknowledge that it's not determinable, indeterminable. Do we agree? Okay, so whether your consumer spending will go up or go down depends on these two factors, right? So which factor is going to be more dominating? So for instance, okay, if your demand curve is going to shift lesser okay a lesser fall in your demand okay, what could have caused a lesser fall in your demand for instance okay if your if your fuel is a necessity good for those h2 students okay you will learn that okay uh, your fuel is between yd0 between 0 to 1 right so when there's an income when there's a recession okay your demand will fall but it won't fall as much Ah, then we can compare. Okay, a slight fall in demand as compared to okay the very first point where your demand is sufficiently inelastic. Okay, then we can address that your consumer spending is likely to increase. So this is how you want to justify. Okay, alternatively we can look here. Okay, if you are not a H two student, we can always play around with this PED. So the assumption here is PED is less than 1, right? Okay, is it going to be less than 1 indefinitely? Are there any possible changes to the PED? Could there be? For instance, okay, can there be a development or can there be a substitute that is developed? Okay, biofuel could be. Okay, so in the long run, okay, if we can use biofuel as a subsidy, then your traditional fuel will be price demand elastic. Okay, when PED becomes elastic, then we will go into this condition, scenario one. Okay, consumer spending will go down. So overall, uh, the last question require the last point requires you to identify indeterminable first before okay we question the assumption behind 
okay, the demand factor and the PED factor. Okay, which one is going to outweigh the other and why? Okay. Hey, good try, Ned. Okay. okay. Just that it's not appropriate for this question. All right. Okay, so I want you guys to look at your initial challenge. Okay, have we kind of addressed your initial challenge? Okay, let me do a quick scrolling again. Huh? Uh, have we identified the framework? Were we able to relate recession to, uh, to, to economic explanation? Uh, okay, challenge for... Okay, framework we have decided already. Okay, so Elijah, okay, uh, have we addressed using the correct framework? Yeah. I have no idea why my dog is like barking like so so loud today. <laughs> Maybe she needs the, the 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 bathroom, I don't know. Hey, can we move on to the next question? Yeah, we move on to the next question, huh? Alright, so I want you all to type out one challenge that you have encountered for the last question. Okay, while you all type out, okay, let me check out what happened to the dog. I don't know how to properly lay out points in the essay. Okay, do we have any other challenges? One second. Coming out with the reasons. Don't know whether we need to compare with other policies or just unintended consequences limitations. Right? Okay, we can see that uh, Ash, okay, what are your challenge? Okay, you can type it out. Okay, so we have very different we have we have very different issues here. And I just want to apologize again. My dog is normally not like, like this. Okay, I think she has a <laughs> she needs to go to the bathroom. Maybe later during the break I'll bring her to the Bring her down it. <laughs> all right, okay. I've gotten all your challenges. Um, now let's look at the approach for this question. How do you for question E? I think I can't find more than one or two effects. All right, okay. So what do you all think question? What what topic do you all think question E is asking? And remember, I always go through this thought process. Okay, what topic? <laughs> what topic do you all think is this related to? It's important to form okay, an impression or an idea behind what is this question. Okay, so I have government intervention. So Ned, okay, I want you to think through why would government intervene? <laughs> All right, uh, I have Zach who brought up a policy. Okay, so why is policy being used here? Okay, so I have market failure. Okay, so we are quite close. Okay, so for those who brought up market failure, what kind of market failure is present here?
what kind of government, what kind of market failure is present here? It's close. Okay, overconsumption of fuel. So what does overconsumption of fuel tells us? What kind of market failure is there? A positive externality. A fuel, fuel. Think through. Fuel is normally related to what kind of externality? We are closer, we are very close. I think Elijah is one of the closest. What kind of externality is this? So this is what they all what they all often encounter. I'm not answering the question. Okay, so yes, negative externalities that is present here. Okay, so can we can we can we agree that one of the points here is negative externalities, right? Okay, so the government, let's phrase the question properly. Okay, so the government should reduce fuel subsidy. Okay, because of should or should not? For when there's presence of negative externality, I forgot. <laughs> should or should not? In the presence of negative externalities, should we or should we not? This question is challenging. Uh. Right? So we have should reduce consumption to read. To reduce consumption should reduce should not subsidize. Okay, so should not subsidize means should reduce lah, right? Okay, so okay, great. Okay, we have one. We got what we've got one point with really, here. Huh? Okay, so we should reduce. Agreed? Because of negative externalities. Okay, so we, we agree that the principle behind fuel subsidy that is going to result in overconsumption of fuel. Right? So if we were to take back fuel subsidy, it acts like a what? If we were to reduce fuel subsidy, it, it acts like a, that's the T word. It acts like a tax. Ah, then we can curb the overconsumption problem. Make sense? So from the from a diagram perspective, this is how it looks like. I'm so sorry, I already drawn this already. I forgot to erase this. And you probably need this diagram later. Okay, so you want to illustrate how a reduction okay, of your fuel subsidy will act like a tax. You okay, call this minor subsidy. Okay, and it can curb your consumption to your socially optimal level. And for those who are familiar with this, you can use this. <laughs> right, like what I've said, uh, okay, for, to, for, for this, these few lessons, okay, we are going to work from backwards. Uh. Okay, we are going to learn from practice. Okay, I'm not going to, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to go through content in, uh, excessively. Okay, so it's content is touch and go. We'll pick along the way. Alright? So now I want you guys to think of a counterpoint. Okay, is there a counterpoint of reducing? Should not reduce, or rather should not reduce. Why is there should not reduce? Okay, before we, we go into the overall framework. So you realize that negative externalities work here, right? Okay, so I want you guys to highlight this. Huh? Government. Right, whenever you encounter a government-based question, okay, it is almost always related to objectives. Okay, so whether a government should or should not reduce fuel subsidy depends on the objectives, right? What objectives do they want to achieve? Make sense? Okay, so now I want you all to adopt this approach. So when we when we reduce fuel subsidy, it's going to it's going to correct negative externalities. Okay, so what objective is achieved here? Okay, what kind of objective? What kind of micro objective is this? Okay, for for, for students who have been with me, they often have, uh, advocate the two E's. What are the two E's? 
All right, so correct. Uh, we have a net okay, uh, allocative efficiency. Okay, so make sure you are familiar with the two E's, uh, efficiency and equity. At least for micro, uh, micro, these are the two. When we move on next year to macro, uh, then we will have more, uh, we will have more objectives. Okay, but at the, for now, okay, we just need, we can use the micro framework to address this, no problem. Okay, so for the efficiency side, we know that, okay, we can address allocative efficiency. We can curb the overconsumption of fuel. We can reduce negative externality. Okay, so do we agree? Okay, this is efficiency. Yeah. So what, what, is the, what is the basis of not reducing? Okay, which, is, which, which, which is the other objective that was not mentioned? And we can go through the same approach. Yeah? Question D is also like this. Okay, once you can go through elimination, you realize that okay, it's often the other one that is not present that's going to be tested. Right? So it's going to result in inequity, right? Okay, so the, the, the objective that we want to be concerned about is equity. So why shouldn't we cut fuel subsidy? Because it will worsen inequity. Okay, so the objective that we want to protect here is equity. So how does fuel subsidy work? Okay, so for those who are not familiar with the school of thought of equity, that these are some of the terms that I will re recommend you to use. Number one, okay, you want to illustrate lower income earners. How are they affected as a result of cutting of fuel subsidy? Okay, you realize that okay, for lower income earners especially, okay, they will be priced out of the market. Why? Because they do not have su sufficient purchasing power. Okay, as a result of a lack of fuel subsidy. Right? And when they are priced out of the when they are priced out, it means that they have no access to the good. Okay, there's ineffective demand for the good. Okay, especially fuel fuel their necessity good. Right? So you realize that this will lead to an inequitable outcome. Okay, it's not fair to the lower income earners. As compared to the higher income earners, uh, it's always a comparison. Okay, I'm going to show you an alternate framework here. Okay, I'm running a bit short on time. Okay, but I believe these two points is good enough. Okay, so for eight to ten mark question, you need two points. Two points. You don't need more. Okay, later in the answer key, I will show you more variation. Okay, but at the very least, you need these two points. Okay, so I'm going to show you an alternate variation. Okay, so you realize that okay, in modern days, uh, questions are phrased differently. Okay, there's another way of asking. You may want to copy this down. Okay, this is a very likely question. Okay, they will ask you, okay, discuss the factors that the Indonesian government should consider. Okay, when they reduce fuel subsidy. <laughs> so instead of using should, okay, they paraphrase it, discuss the factors that the Indonesian government uh, that would, would consider when they want to reduce fuel subsidy. So this kind of phrasing will require you to use as, uh, another approach. It's also, it, this approach is actually more sound. It can be used in this, this should and should not question as well. Okay, so we will encounter such questions um, in, in one of the upcoming practice series. I'm going to just touch on this briefly. Okay, so the framework, okay, instead of should and should not, okay, because the question is obviously not asking you should and should not, it's asking about the factors, right? So the factors that you want to consider down here, okay, is what we call your BCC framework. Okay, have I covered BCC with all of you before? With those that were with, don't have. Have you all heard of BCC? Alright, so you want to consider what is B, C, C. Each of them stand for a different point. Huh? What is the benefit 
of, of reducing fuel subsidy? What is a cause or an unintended consequence? Okay, of reducing fuel subsidy. And what is a constraint? Okay, of fuel subsidy or reducing fuel subsidy. Is everyone following me? So if you were to adopt this BCC framework uh, okay, into this question, it also, it also works fairly well here. Okay, we can see that the benefit of reducing is allocative efficiency. Do you see that? Because you are going to curb over consumption. The cost of reducing is inequity. Do you see that? So that, therefore you should not. And there's one more constraint. Constraint can also work here. Okay, constraint is a wild card. Okay, I I recommend you guys to think through how to use the constraint. If not, I will show you in the answer key how to use constraint later. Okay, but at the very least, okay, today at the end of today, you have two approaches to approach such question. Okay, you can you you can use the thesis antithesis approach, or you can use the BCC approach for such question. Okay, make sure okay, you are able to identify the key term, okay, government, okay, and relating your explanation to objectives first okay, before you construct your thesis and antithesis. Okay, so for your should, re should reduce part, make sure you use the correct framework of negative externalities okay, and how a fuel tax can correct the overconsumption. I, I open and close inverted the comma. Okay, it's a reduction of fuel subsidy which acts like a fuel tax. Okay, on the other end, you want to show that okay, how inequity will arise okay, when you cut fuel subsidy. Okay, before we synthesize. Okay, I'm going to leave the synthesis for to you guys. Okay, you, can, you guys can think through how you all want to synthesize. Should or should not. Okay, justify that yourself. Alright, is everyone clear? Alright, I'm going to go for a quick break. Uh, when you are back, okay, please turn on your webcam. Okay, so you can kick start with the full written practice. Uh, somebody asked how long is the break yeah the, the faster you come back the faster we can end <laughs> thanks
Alright, um, okay, so I'm going to explain how it works huh, from now. Uh, realize that we are slightly short of time. Okay, so in order for us to end at 4 o'clock, okay, we will commence with the time practice uh, concurrently. So I explain what's concurrently. So I will set for 40 minutes for you for the time practice. Okay, meanwhile, I'm giving you a lot of time. Uh, okay, normally I set for my year, my, 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 I set for the more seasoned students is 30 minutes. I give you all more time, doesn't matter. Make sure you do it properly. 40 minutes. Okay, and meanwhile, okay, I will be recording the answers. Okay, so I, um, right after, right after we, we time's up at four o'clock, okay, that's it, okay, and we'll call it the day. Okay, but, okay, the answers, that I've recorded. Okay, make sure you check the same lesson folder. Okay, I'll upload a YouTube clip. Okay, you can scroll, drag all the way towards the end. You can see the answers that I have presented. Okay, make sure you do your correction. Okay, before you submit digitally. Okay, so the clip will be up somewhere by tonight. I actually shot the first draft yesterday. So yesterday one, yesterday's one was actually good enough, but I intend to reshoot another one. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to create four breakout rooms. Okay, you can join the breakout rooms. Anytime you need me, you can just raise your hand. Okay, I'll hop, hop in and address your concerns. Okay, okay so 40 minutes. Huh? Okay, give me a second. Options, I will set. Count, uh, will close after 40 minutes. Right, the timer is 40 minutes. The breakout room will close automatically at 40 minutes. Okay, you guys can join. Right, I'm going to proceed on with recording. Okay, so uh, from time to time, I may be hopping to help some of the students, and this will will break the record, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's look at question D together. Okay, so earlier we have gone through a very intensive draft or outline. Okay, so for the viewers out there, if you have missed out the the outline phase, okay, please uh, revisit the uh, the earlier clip. Okay, to look to to identify. Okay, what are the top process of going through this outline together? Uh, going uh, top process of constructing an outline for this question. Okay, so I'm going to go through the answers. The answers will look very similar to what we have done in the outline. Okay, uh, to be more to be more specific to be more specific. Okay, it is looking at what are the keywords. Okay, that we need to expand on. Okay, we are addressing the outline. All right. Okay, so um. Similar to what we have discussed earlier on, okay, the first paragraph, okay, we will came out with all, all the key definitions. Okay, so I won't go through this any, any further because this is essentially the same as what we have did earlier on. Right, so we have total spending. Okay, make sure you define what is total spending. Alright, so you want to illustrate okay, that uh, a fuel subsidy is going to lead to a higher cost of production and this will lead to a fall in supply. You want to define what is supply, make sure you have satellite variables. Okay, you want to illustrate, you want to relate recession to demand. Okay, you want to define demand. So these are the few key definitions. So number one, okay, fuel duty. So just now we have, I've actually shown you this diagram. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a secondary way, okay, of illustrating your consumer spending. Okay, instead of zero P, I'm so sorry, uh, this belongs here. Q1 belongs here. 
get us a typo. Okay, so instead of identifying zero P zero uh E zero Q zero, we can use we can we can label your rectangles. Okay, so you can see that this is your initial spending A and B. Okay, your final spending will be rectangle A and C. Okay, we can use the same approach, similar approach by labeling the rectangles instead of the four points. Okay, so a few more duty. Okay, let's go on to illustrate okay, in depth, in, in full. Okay, what is a fuel duty? Okay, this will lead to a higher cost of production, fall in supply of your fuel, shifting your supply to the left. Okay, make sure you are consistent with the diagram. Now, PED. Okay, you want to illustrate that your fuel tends to be price demand inelastic. Why? Okay, there's no close substitute or you can use necessity. Okay, and you can also illustrate from the extract okay, that there is an increase in 10 million pounds of total spending as a result of a fuel subsidy. So these two okay, are the key evidence. Okay? So evidence number one is user determinant. Evidence number two is case material. Okay, and relate okay, to your total spending. You need to show the before and the after. So like what I've mentioned earlier on, okay, the before and the after okay, can be shown using the four points okay, like I've shown you earlier on. Or you can use A, B, and C now here. Okay, it will increase from A to B to will fall from A, B to A, C. So you realize the answers they are they are not they are not very different from the outline. It's how you derive the outline that is going to be more important. Right. So on the other end, we can see that the recession will lead to a fall in your total spending. Okay, you can see that as a result of a. Uh, Recession, purchasing power of four, income and purchasing power of four. Fuel is a normal good. This is a good assumption if you are a H2 student. If not, you don't need that. And this will lead to a fall in demand. Right? Okay, and when demand fall, okay, you can actually see that okay, you will result in a fall in your total spending in the shaded area here. This is the fall in your total spending. All right. So this is exactly the same as what we have covered earlier on. Okay. So overall, the effects of the increase in the fuel duty and recession is not determinable. Okay. Whether your total spending will increase or fall depends on the relative magnitude of the fall in demand as compared to the magnitude of your PED. Okay. Not supply. I just saw somebody brought up supply. Okay. It's not correct. A supply is only used when you want to find out the magnitude of your price, equilibrium price and your quantity. Okay, so if you want to look at spending, we have to look at PED. So just now we have weighed out a few variations. So you can actually see here, this is another way to tie up. So if we were to know that the severity of the recession is quite huge, for instance, okay, it may have a lasting impact on demand. Okay, and demand is going to fall. Okay, more as compared okay, to an increase in your consumer spending due to PED being inelastic. So this is how you want to justify okay, citing a key assumption. Alright. So it's important to identify, I'm going to go through the Marcus comments here. Okay, A lot of students did not identify PED. Very, very important. I've stated before. Okay, Whenever there's a change in supply condition, you need to deduce total spending. Okay, make sure you assume what is PED first. If not, you cannot get this. Must assume PED. All right. Some of the earlier batches came out with an interesting uh, some, um, approach. Okay, for the recession point. So the 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 approach works only when you bring in car. Remember. Okay, we have left car out of the picture. Right, but if you were to bring in car, this is how it can potentially work. A recession is going to lead to a fall in income, fall in purchasing power. This is the same approach as the fuel, but this time round, we are going to relate to a fall in demand for car. Okay, when there's a fall in demand for car, we need to deduce what is the relationship between car, okay, and 
fuel. So car and fuel, they are joined in consumption or what we call complements. Okay, and therefore, if you want to use this relationship, make sure you relate a fall in demand for car will lead to a fall in price of car. Okay, and when there's a fall in price of car, this will drive up demand for fuel and higher consumer spending for fuel. Okay, it's just a reverse of what we have drawn earlier on here. Okay, so this is the common misconception. Uh, a fall in demand for car will not lead to a fall in demand for fuel. It does not work like this. Okay, because if you have identified that they are joined in consumption, this is the connector. You need to find out what happens to the price of car. Okay, before we can deduce what happens to the demand for fuel. Okay, so this one, this point is accepted only if you go through this thought process. If not, okay, if you bring, if you jump from here to here, it's conceptual error. Okay, if you jump from fall in demand to fall in the fall in demand for car resulting in fall in demand for fuel, this is a strict conceptual error. Okay. All right. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to hop into the various um, breakout room, okay, uh, to check for check the other students before I go through the last question, okay. So, uh, for the viewers, you can you can you can quickly fast forward, okay, fast forward a little bit, okay, if you want to check out the answers for this. Oh, Zach, you had a question for me. Uh, yeah. So that, there's a there's that... a there's a button called call for instructor. Do you see that? Uh, wait. You mean oh wait. You mean the ask for help? I ask for help. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, oh. You raise your hand. I can't see <laughs> because I'm oh, not oh. in the same room. Oh, I guess just I said raise your hand so I talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so because I was uh I was doing the first paragraph just now lah. So. Mm. And the first, because just now you, was, you were mentioning that uh, the five pointers for paragraph one, right? So I was at the part on fuel duty. Mm. So I just, so my question is, so when I write uh, paragraph one, right, do I need to state how fuel duty uh, affects affects the demand? Because just now we, we concluded that the fuel duty will already decrease the supply, right? So do I need to state what the demand no, demand didn't change. What? There's okay. no change in demand. Only PED only. Okay. It won't affect demand. Yeah. Okay. Can. Thank you. That's it. it make sure you ask. Press the correct button. Uh, if not, I won't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See. Yeah. Thank you. Hey Elijah, everything good? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's yeah, okay. if you need help, just just press ask ask for help, uh, then I I'll, I'll be notified. Huh? See you yeah. in a short while. Alright, okay, I will move on for the last question. Okay, so I was just checking with the, some of the other students how are they coping with the break in the breakout room. Alright, the last question is particularly interesting, okay, because there are two different approaches that work quite well here. Okay, we can use the BCC approach as I have covered in the outline, okay, or you can use the TCs and NTTCs approach. Okay, so the extra emphasis is placed on Indonesian government or any government or country related. You want to uncover okay, the objectives. Okay, so okay, if you are watching here as a second year student, okay, you can possibly consider macro objectives. Okay, I, for simplicity, I won't be using any macro uh, uh, points here. You can find them stashed under the appendix. Okay, but for um, 
students who haven't learned macro yet, can okay, micro will also work here. Okay, so you want to look out for the two E's that I've stated in the outline, efficiency and equity here. Okay, so the entire purpose of this is to go through the depth. Okay, what do we need for efficiency and what do we need for equity? Okay, to go through these two points. Okay, I've mentioned that there is a wild card. Okay, the wild card, okay, the third point is a, is a constraint point. Let's see, okay, what kind of constraint we can work around here. Alright, so the constraint point is actually budget constraint. Okay, for those who have guessed correctly. Okay, because of a budget deficit. So if you look at the extract, it actually tells you that there is a problem, budget deficit. Okay, what is the budget deficit here? You can see that the government has been spending a lot on fuel subsidy. Okay, so the fuel subsidy will, will actually exhaust the government reserves. Okay, prevent them to spend on other uh, amenities such as healthcare, education. So you can play around the concept of constraint. Okay, in this case, it's budget deficit. So this is a should point. Uh, it's not a should not. It should reduce fuel subsidy because of a budget deficit. Okay, so the other two points we have gone through earlier on. Okay, so uh, you can stick to these two. Okay, if not, you can. The alternatively, the alternate point is to replace A1 with A2. Okay, you can use this instead of this. Also can. Okay, so I'm going to move on okay, to illustrate okay, the full write-up. Okay, you can define what is the fuel subsidy. Okay, so you want, if you have learned macro, then you probably want to look into the nature of the country, whether the country is a net oil exporter or oil importer. So the idea behind this is, net oil exporter means they're selling more oil to the rest of the world. Net oil importer means they're buying more oil from the rest of the world. So in this case, Indonesia is clearly a net oil importer. They need to buy a lot more oil. Okay, and not only that, they have to provide substantial subsidies on top of spending a higher high high level of resources to acquire imports of oil. Okay, so uh, we don't need this for now. Okay, but if you are watching this, okay, as uh, when you have learned macro, you can consider using balance of payment. Okay, or current account deficit to illustrate this. Okay, you can make a mental note: current account deficit. Okay, this is for H two students only. Alright, okay, so the first point that I want to cover, make sure you come up with a really good topic sentence. Huh? Okay, so I want to emphasize on the on the nature of, of a good topic sentence. A good topic sentence will save you a lot of pain. Okay, by telling the examiner what exact point you want to state. Okay, so in this case, okay, by cutting your budget deficit, uh, by cutting fuel fuel subsidies, it can correct budget deficit. Okay, because of an in inheritance constraint when you spend on fuel subsidy. So, okay, I'm going to I'm going to point out what are the important points of fuel subsidy. So make a mental note or when you're watching this, please use a green pen to do correction. So the few key things that you want to be concerned about is the case evidence that suggests that there's a worsening budget deficit. Budget deficit means that okay your as a government, the tax revenue that you collect Okay, it's not enough to finance your government spending. Okay, so the government spending here includes fuel subsidy. Okay, so when government government spending goes up or fuel subsidy goes up, okay, this will lead to a imbalance between your budget. Okay, you're going to spend more than what you're going to collect. And what's the idea behind spending more? Up cost or trade off. Very, very important to illustrate when there's a constraint, when there's a budget deficit, this necessity is a trade-off. Okay, what's the opportunity cost of you for uh, financing fuel subsidy? Okay, this will result in the Indonesian government to have a problem to fund other 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 amenities such as what healthcare, okay, such as transport, such as education. So it's important to highlight okay, the trade-off whenever you talk about budget. Deficit or talk about a constraint point. Okay, so this is one of the considerations. Okay, if we use the BCC approach earlier on, you see the constraint here. Okay, so this is a budget constraint. Budget deficit and budget constraints, okay, they are the they are they are the, 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 the idea behind these two are the same. Okay, because of a budget constraint, okay, you result in a but because of a budget deficit, this results in a constraint. You don't get to spend as you like. 
Alright, so this point is actually not necessary, okay, but it is good to add in a, a evaluation point. Okay, you can see that by excessively correct correcting budget deficit, okay, it may not be politically viable. Okay, because because what? Okay, because fuel is a necessity good. Huh? Okay, so um this is a populist measure. Okay, government may not have the the resources or the political will to push through this tough measure. Alright, yeah, I want to go on to the next point, which is what we have discussed. This is a very important point. Okay? So please pay attention to what I'm going to say say here right now, okay, and do your necessary corrections. So the next point is a should point. Okay, we should cut fewer subsidies because this is going to correct market failure and negative externality. So it's, it's important to identify from extract tree. Okay, there is traffic congestion. There is as a result of over consumption of fuel. So you always have to connect the dots. Whenever there is fuel based question, subsidies based question, it is almost always resulting in a negative externality okay or allocative inefficiency okay so make sure you're able to address that okay or identify it clearly so this question is a double negative uh, reducing fuel subsidy fuel subsidy lowers cost of production okay so double negative if you reduce that it will increase cost of production it acts like a tax right so here important so the concept that is tested here is actually tax and negative externality just that they 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 frame the question okay a bit more tricky okay instead they put subsidy in what they want to trick students to use uh uh the concept of uh positive external not true okay not not all the time okay so in this case we can see that when you remove fuel subsidy producers will incur a higher cost of production very very important to state this and this is an indirect subsidy right so when you remove the indirect subsidy okay cost of production goes up producers will have to pass off higher cost to consumer remember this is a this is a consumption based negative externality okay whichever policies that you use here must go through the producer the producer have to pass off higher or lower cost to the consumer in order to get the consumers to internalize the external cost of traffic congestion okay so this is the diagram the framework okay this is a, a considered uh, you can you can actually strike this you can you can use plus tax or stick to the question you can use minus subsidy the reason why i use plus tax here because i already identified this as it acts like a tax but if you don't use this word, uh, don't use this specific phrasing, that's going to be quite dangerous. Okay, then in that case, it might be not answering the question. Only when you have defined reducing fuel subsidy as a form of uh, indirect tax, then you can use this, this keyword here. Okay, so you force the consumers to internalize the external cost, they will reduce consumption to the socially optimal level at QS. Okay, then the Indonesian government can remove negative externality, can reduce the effects of negative externality and achieve allocative efficiency. Okay, a quick limitation on fuel subsidy. Okay, we can see that uh, in this case, okay, it might have limited effect. Okay, why? Okay, because of the nature of fuel being price demand inelastic. Okay, therefore, a tax is unlikely to curb the consumption of fuel substantially. If you didn't have this point, I think it's fine. Okay, but this is the most important point uh, that you want to use. Okay, so for students who are relatively new to the program, okay, I will run you through okay on what are the things that you need to work on for your market failure. Okay, when you see me on a one-to-one -one basis, okay, or when you consult me. Oh, okay, so make uh, if you don't understand what is this, okay, put a star, okay, and you, you book a uh, book a uh, book a session with me. Okay, I will I will show you what to work on. Okay, likewise, for the point on inequity, is the same. Okay, you have to identify that by cutting fuel subsidy, it will worsen inequity. Therefore, we should not. Okay, so you should not. Okay, so you want to define what is inequity. You want to talk about resource distribution being unfair and unjust. Okay, so if you remove fuel subsidy, 
Okay, producers will pass off higher costs to consumers. And you want to emphasize on the lower income earners. Very, very crucial. The lower income earners will always be disproportionately affected. Why? Okay, because okay, as compared to higher high income earners, okay, they do not have sufficient dollar votes. Hey, give me a second. I need to I need to hop onto another room. <laughs> Hey, hi. How can I help? Yeah. Um. For paragraph two, for the um, first question, right? Ah, uh, the first uh, question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's assumed that like demand is uh price inelastic because uh motorist spending on fuel increases, right? Yep. But then for paragraph three, do I have to assume the elasticity of supply also? I said no need already. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Yeah, because no matter how you do you, you vary the PES, okay, the, the effect is going to be the same. Oh, okay. I, I want you to set this as a as a homework again. Okay? You can you can you can draw later. No matter your PES being elastic or inelastic, okay, you try shifting your demand curve. It's going to go in the same direction as your consumer spending. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank thanks. you. Thanks. Right, so sorry, okay, uh, I was cut earlier on. <laughs> There's a student asking a question. All right, okay, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, like I've said, okay, always focus on the lower income earners. These are some of the keywords that you should consider. Okay, sufficient dollar votes. The lower income earners will not have the sufficient dollar votes to dictate what the market should produce for them. Okay, and this will lead to ineffective demand. Okay, well the idea behind ineffective demand is lower income earners are willing but unable to consume. Okay, willing but unable. So this is a quick limitation for equity. Yeah? Okay, so the intent of fuel subsidy okay, is to protect lower income earners. That's the intent. That's why we don't want to cut. If not, they'll be priced out of the market. Okay, but more than often, okay, please put this, this please put a star here. It's very this is a very, very uh, this is a very usual way to critique fuel subsidy here or inequity or fuel based problems. We often see that fuel subsidy end up okay favoring the higher income earners. Why? Okay, it's all about profile of spending. What do we mean by profile of spending? We can actually deduce who consumes fuel more um, more regularly. Is it the lower income or the higher income? Obviously the higher income, right? Okay, they have greater needs for electricity, they drive vehicle. The lower income earners probably drive bicycle. Yeah, they don't have a uh, aircon at home. Right? So the fuel subsidies inevitably will be enjoyed by the higher income earners. Okay, so this the intent of the policy is supposed to protect the lower income earners, but it creates okay, an, an unintended problem okay, of, of protecting the higher income earners instead. <laughs> okay, so the impact on inequity is indeterminable okay, because we can't tell whether the lower income earners def will definitely benefit from this. Not all of them, at least for sure. So I'm going to wrap up with a synthesis. Huh? So listen carefully on how we are going to wrap up. Overall, okay, whether a fuel sub whether sh whether we should or should not reduce fuel subsidy from the perspective of a government, this is one very what is this is one very uh, good way to wrap up or synthesize. Okay, is the ability of the government to mitigate the problem created. So what happens when you re remove fuel subsidy? It will create inequity, right? Okay, it will cause a lower income earners okay, to be priced off the market, right? So if the government is able to address this issue, for instance, okay, by providing a lower income earners okay, a job, helping them with retraining so that they can command higher wages, do you think that they will still have the affordability issue? Unlikely. Okay, so inequity will be elevated. Alright. Okay, so this is how you want to construct a synthesis. Whether or not the government should or should not depends on okay, whether the government is able to step in to mitigate the unintended consequence. 
okay, of removing a fuel subsidy. So you can also see that crude oil prices has been rising steadily. Okay, so in this case we can comment on what? Okay, we can comment on the sustainability. Okay, so you can you can subsidize for a short period of time, fine. But what happens if crude oil prices keep going up? Okay, you spend more spend more money importing them as I'm subsidizing them. Okay, it may not be sustainable for the budget. You can talk about the time period. All right. So another 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 way that you can you can possibly look at, okay, is okay, this is the second way to uh, this is this is actually time period right down here. Okay, a third way that you can look in is the magnitude. Okay, I was sharing this with the earlier class yesterday. Overall, whether we should or should not reduce fuel subsidy depends on what is the magnitude of your fuel subsidy re reduction. Right. So we don't want to reduce fuel subsidy okay, excessively or rather okay, one shot you cut a lot. Why? Because it will end, it will it will worsen the inequity problem sharply. Right? So what we should do as a government is you should over time gradually reduce your fuel subsidy. And at the same time, you can also complement with other government initiations to raise Okay, the skill set of lower income earners so that they can afford fuel on their own with higher wages. Okay, so this is one way to look at that. Okay, should or should not depends on how, how drastic the measure is. But if the country is facing very severe budget deficit, they have to cut immediately. No choice. If not, okay, slowly over time. It's like drugs, huh? If you don't send to send the person to cold turkey immediately, well, the fellow will die, right? You have to we have to reduce the drug dosage. Okay. So I'm going to go through some of the um, harder approaches here. Okay. So the uh, ones that I brought up was the easier ones. Okay. So if you're a second year student, if you're looking at this clip, okay, uh, we have learned macro. You can consider current account deficit, balance of payment. You can consider a depreciation of rupiah and imported inflation. Okay, so these are these are these are some of the things for uh these are some of the counterpoints you can consider. Okay, so when you reduce you can improve your current account deficit. Okay, you can also consider cost push inflation. So when you reduce fuel subsidy, this will re this will result in cost push inflation. Okay, and this will result in a fall in actual growth. SRAS curve will shift up. Okay, so these two are the benefits, and this one is the cost. So I I stash all the macro points under the appendix, yeah, because we don't really need that. Okay, but you still can use that if you can cite them from the third paragraph, I believe. Okay, I'm using extract three, I think. Yep, extract three. All right. Okay, so with this, okay, I'm going to conclude today's sharing. Okay, make sure you submit your script. Okay, do your corrections. Okay, and if you have any questions for me, okay, please drop a comment, or rather, or if if you are not watching this live, then you can WhatsApp me. Uh, yeah, pertaining to these last two questions. All right, so. Okay, with that, okay, I'm going to I'm going to stop recording. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm going to see you guys.